Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, you are most welcome to this deliverance retreat for these coming three days. And as we res, uh, start this deliverance retreat right now, let us invoke the presence of Holy Spirit, presence of Our Lady, and presence of all the saints and all the heavenly beings here in this chapel and also around the world, wherever you are, the presence of these holy people will be there in your home, wherever you are. As you pray together, you are not alone. We are one community, one children of God, and one family, and coming together to, uh, to, to attend this retreat and to worship our Lord Jesus. Let's take the Holy Rosary in our hand, and let us ask the intercession of Our Lady, and say one, our Father, and ten, Hail Mary, and pray and surrender these three days of deliverance retreat in the hands of Our Lady through her immaculate heart and through her intercession. Let it be a mighty anointed one. Let us pray for this intention. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Mother Mary, we surrender these three days of uh, deliverance retreat in your immaculate heart. Mother Mary, in the seed for the whole world. There are thousands of families are joining, attending this retreat from around the world. As you were present at wedding at Cana, be present at in every family. If there is anything lacking in them, lacking in the family, Mother Mary, through your powerful intercession, let Jesus come and bless and touch every family and everyone and set them free through the, for this intention. We pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your mother, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for all the families who are afflicted by some kind of evil power. We pray for them for the complete deliverance. Mother Mary, pray for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your mother, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray for the Divinity Center, all the Divinity Centers around the world, and all of us who are here, all the priests and volunteers, team members, choir members, and all the electrical equipments, all the sound system, internet connection, everything we surrender to you. Mother Mary, protect everyone and everything. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your mother, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother Mary, we pray for all the people, especially the youngsters, youth, who are into wrong relationships and addictions and attachments of this world. We pray for them. Bless them. Through your intercession, let them be set free. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your mother, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother Mary, we pray for all those who are in unknown bondages. They do not know what is the problem. There are so many other bondages that is binding them. They are not free. They need freedom. They need a freedom of a child. We pray for this. Mother Mary, intercede for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Bless thy your mouth, women, and bless this the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother Mary, we pray for all the families, all the parents who are crying, all those who are in tears because of various reasons, especially because of the financial problem, many other problems, worried about their children, the future, and all the problems that they are facing. We pray for complete deliverance for all of them. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are your more women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother Mary, we pray for all those who have prepared a lot for this deliverance retreat with lots of hope, with lots of expectation, with an expectant faith. They know something is going to happen. They know their families are going to be blessed. They know they are going to be set free. Let it happen through your intercession, Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your mother, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother Mary, we pray for all the people, especially those who are prepared through fasting, penances, and many other uh, abstinence. We pray for all of them, those who are supportive, those who are spreading this uh, uh, the deliverance retreat information about uh, uh, this retreat to everyone those who want to do evangelization in their own way whatever capacity they are in they they tried their best to do the evangelization bless them let their hard work be rewarded in a mighty way we pray for these hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are your more women and bless this the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother Mary, we, as we attend this retreat, we consecrate our own family members, relatives and friends, and everyone who is close to us, our house and our surroundings, our job, and everything that is, that is of us. We surrender to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, so that let everything be protected as we are in the battlefield let every one of us be protected from all evil afflictions we pray for these as the intercession of our lady hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are your more women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen mother mary you knew every secrets every secret desires everything that we missed out if there is any preparation which we, have, we should have been doing, we should have done, but we did not do it, maybe because of the ignorance, maybe because we forgot, maybe because of something else, but Mother Mary, you know every detail of it. Mother Mary, intercede for us as you interceded at wedding at Cana, when the family was not aware of certain things that were ha happening in their family. Mother Mary, pray for us. Pray for everyone who is attending this retreat. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your more women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without sin. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stretch out your hand towards the blessed sacrament. Let us worship God. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to come and take control of us. Oh Holy Spirit, come now. Come to every family, every house, every living room, every every gadget that you are using, computer, internet, mobile phone, TV. We surrender everything of all these social media, all the instruments that they are using right now. Let it be washed in the precious blood of Jesus. Let all the families and all the rooms, wherever they are, let it be filled with the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit. We pray for this right now. Let the Holy Spirit come upon every child of God. Let everyone be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's all sing together loudly.
close your eyes and feel the presence of God. Your whole family is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit now. You can feel the anointing in your body. You can feel the power. You can feel the power of the Holy Spirit now covering you right now. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the gift of tears now. The Lord is giving you the gift of tears. Those who feel like crying in front of Jesus, let them cry louder. He's filling your heart with His love. His love is filling your heart right now. Be filled with the love of God. Let's close our eyes and feel the presence of God now. The Lord has already started delivering so many families, so many people, so many children of God. The Lord is giving you the gift of tears with the repentance. Those who feel like crying in front of Jesus, let them cry louder. Don't worry, He is consoling you, He is touch touching you, He is setting you free now. He is here now. He is here. He is in your home now. He is standing next to you. He is hugging you. He is embracing you right now. You can feel his touch. He is, you can feel his anointing. Abba. Thank you for the mighty deliverance right now. We thank you. Let every evil afflictions be driven out right now from every family now. Let them be able to attend these three days of retreat without any block. We command in Jesus' name to every evil power that are trying to block the anointing, that are trying to block the de deliverance and healing, trying to block attending this retreat. We command you in Jesus' name to go to the foot of Jesus and be bound there forever in Jesus' name. The Lord is healing many people right now. Somebody was not able to speak. Suddenly you were not able to speak, but now the Lord is opening your tongue, opening your mouth. The Lord is healing you. Mighty deliverance is taking place. You are able to speak now. Somebody who has paralyzed, walk with your back pain. The Lord is healing you right now. You are able to sit down. You are able to stand up in Jesus' name. The Lord is delivering you right now. Some people have got a growth lump in the body. It's disappeared right now in Jesus' name. Let us stretch out your hand towards the blessed sacrament. He is here right now. He is anointing every child now. He is setting everyone free now in Jesus' name. There is nothing impossible for our Lord Jesus. Believe. He is here now. He is anointing every child. Close your eyes and pray. Surrender your whole family, your family members, your relatives and friends and everyone who is in the family. The Lord is protecting everyone now. Nothing is impossible for our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Abba, we thank you.
slowly call the name of Jesus Jesus said in my name you will cast out demons in my name whatever you ask everything will be given to you in my name there is power in my name whatever you ask everything will be given to you repeat the name of Jesus those who do not know how to pray how to worship just repeat the name of Jesus thank you father thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit all glory to you all praises to you father all worship to you father the Lord is healing someone who has got severe throat infection the Lord is healing you right now Sarah the Lord is blessing you Perpetua, the Lord is blessing you right now. Anthony, the Lord is blessing you. Linus, the Lord is blessing you right now. Someone who has got severe neck pain, spondylosis, you are healed completely right now in Jesus' name. Some people who have got joint pain, every joint you have pain and swelling, the Lord is healing you right now. The swelling has just disappeared. Thank you. Somebody who has got severe back pain, you are not able to bend down. The Lord is healing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Abba, we thank you. Abba, Father, we praise you. We worship you. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Glory, glory, Father. Glory, Father. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, you are most welcome to these three days of retreat. We are in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament these three days. And there are so many people who are praying for you. And you are most welcome. And as one family, we all, we all are participating, attending this retreat and praying for each other from around the world. And I'm sure the Lord has already started delivering you, already started healing you. And he is there in your home in your family. He will never disappoint you. He is our God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kindly lift up your right hand and say hallelujah. 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 Wherever you are, you are lifting up the hands. When we lift up the hands, if possible, both hands, when we lift up the hands, is a clear sign that, Lord, we are empty without you. And all, you know, in the, in the battlefield, when soldiers surrender against the enemy, how do they react? They lift up their hands and come out. What does it mean? No more shooting. We surrender. So now in the presence of God, we are telling the Lord, Lord, no more shooting. We surrender. We surrender. We will never fight against you. We will never go against you. We know that only you can conquer us. You have conquered us. You have conquered the world. And now we are yours. We surrender completely, totally for you. Let's all lift up our hands and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank, you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's all pray for all those who are attending these three days of retreat. There are so many families who are in bondage and they are thirsting, crying and repenting and then doing penances and doing fasting and praying for deliverance. Let them be set free. With this conviction, let's all say together hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise Thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we are going to listen to the Word of God for coming nearly one hour, and then we will have another talk, and then we will have adoration, and then we will pray, uh, the celebrate the Holy Eucharist. And meanwhile, in all these Word of God, as you go on listening to the Word of God, healing and deliverance takes place through the power of the Word of God. We read like this, we read like this in the word of God, Gospel of John chapter 
Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 3. Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 3. The word of God says very clearly. Let us read. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. The cleansing, deliverance takes place as you listen to the word of God. Many people, some people were asking me, Father, uh, will we get deliverance by sitting in front of computer, TV, mobile phone and attend the retreat? My dear brothers and sisters, our God is beyond time and space. He can touch and he can deliver wherever you are. You just need to do only one thing. Just listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God and accept the word of God and believe the word of God. When you believe the word of God, you will get deliverance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will get delivered. That's why the word of God says, you have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. So you must have heard one of the testimonies. We were reading it out after the, I think it's after Pentecost retreat. There were some testimonies and one of them was like this. Um, when they were attending the retreat in front of the TV, praise and worship during the prayer time when the deliverance prayer was done and during the deliverance prayer they received something filling their heart one person he was filled with something he felt some the whole, uh, whole uh, body started shivering and then he's uh, experienced numbness in your tongue and then fell down flat for almost 10 minutes and the whole family were worried they were sitting around and praying praying over then he got up and is completely delivered and he was into lots of addictions later he sent the testimony saying he was completely delivered just imagine sitting in front of the computer tv and watching and attending the retreat and praying and worshiping the lord touched him in that country though the blessed sacrament is exposed here in ramsgate the blessing can come and reach out to every any nook and corner of this universe that is the power of our Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You only need to do one thing. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Let's read this word of God. Everybody repeat after me. Gospel of Matthew chapter 4 was 8 onwards. Uh, 9 onwards. Gospel of Matthew chapter 4 was 9 onwards. We read like this. And he said to him. And he said to him. All these I will give you. All these I will give you. If you will fall down and worship me. If you will fall down and worship me. The devil said to Jesus. And then what did Jesus say? Verse 10. Jesus said to him. Jesus said to him. Away with you Satan. Away with you Satan. For it is written. For it is written. Worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. And serve only him. And serve only him. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Verse 11. Next one. Then the devil left him. Then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and waited on him. And suddenly angels came and waited on him. My dear brothers and sisters, the moment Jesus said, Worship your Lord, only God, worship God. The moment Jesus said, Worship your Lord God, then, then the devil left him. When you worship the true God, the devil cannot stay there. Because devil wants worship. He wants worship. That is why he is moving around you. He is playing around you. He is standing around you because he is expecting worship from you. The way we live, we are compromising. Therefore, he knows today or tomorrow we will worship him. And he knows we have some weaknesses, some tendencies. Therefore, today or tomorrow we will worship him. So he is waiting around us. He is standing around he is waiting for our worship. Remember, he tried even Jesus. He tried to get the worship in front of Jesus. He said, Jesus, you don't need to go through all these sufferings. You just need to bow down in front of me. I will give you everything. We read Gospel Luke chapter 4 verse 6. Luke 4 verse 6. We read like this. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory all these authority. He showed the whole world, the beauty of the whole world. And devil said to you, to Jesus. Who is Jesus? 
Jesus is the creator of the whole world. He is the author owner of the whole world. But the devil said to you I will give. I will give. Devil says I will give. Their glory and all these authority for it has been given over to me. And I give it to you anyone I please. The devil said I will give to anyone whom I please. He said. Then what did Jesus say? You know this is very interesting. The devil claimed that the whole authority of the whole world is given to me. Who, and he says it has been given to me. That means somebody else gave to him. So who gave this authority? Who gave all these things? Who surrendered all these things to him? And now he says I will give to anyone who, whom I am whom pleased with. What does it mean? The devil is claiming that the whole universe belongs to me. I have authority. The whole earth, I have authority. I am the owner. I am the, I am the ruler of this world. Therefore, if you worship me, I will give you this. Then what did Jesus say? Verse 7. Then that is when Jesus said, if, and then devil said, if you then will worship me, it will be, it will all be yours. So the devil is tempting Jesus. He want, the, he want Jesus to worship him. Then Jesus said, verse 8. Then verse 8 we read. Jesus answered him. It is written. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Don't ever serve anybody else. Don't ever, don't ever worship anyone else. Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. When devil came to know this Jesus will never worship him will never bow down in front of him. The moment Jesus said, worship only God, there is no more serving anyone else, the devil left him. My dear brothers and sisters, the devil will leave your family. If you are 100% sure, if you are 100% convinced and convinced, can sure that you will worship only true God, you will never compromise. Then the no devil will enter into your family. My dear brothers and sisters, never again, through your words and actions, never compromise. Never entertain him. He will have no authority on you. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is something very interesting. When the devil claimed that he is the author, he has authority, Jesus did not deny it. But instead, Jesus accepted it. Jesus knew. Jesus said, yes, you have authority now. Let us read. Uh, John chapter 12 verse 31 John chapter 12 verse 31 we read Jesus said now is the judgment of this world now the ruler of this world will be driven out what does it mean Jesus accepted until the moment of his crucifixion the devil has authority on this world and Jesus said on the Mount Calvary, when I die on Mount Calvary, ruler of this world is cast out, driven out. Until then he has authority on this world. Let's read John 14.30, 30, 30, 30. We read Gospel of John chapter 14, verse 3030. The word of God says, I will no longer talk much with you, Jesus said. For the ruler of this world is coming, but he has no power over me. Jesus said, the ruler of the world has power over everyone else. Rule over, ruler of the whole world has power over everyone because everyone is in sin. But he has no power over me because I am not in sin. Therefore, I will pay the price. I will die on the cross and I will purchase all of you. And then he will have no power over you. Jesus purchased us on Mount Calvary through his precious blood. Let's also read Gospel of John chapter 16 verse 11. 16 verse 11. 16 11. About judgment. Because the ruler of this world has been condemned. See in all these Bible passages. Jesus also agrees the claim of the devil. Devil said, this belongs to me. This all belongs to me. I am the authority. Then Jesus said, yes, you are authority only for the time being. Until I die on the Mount Calvary. Praise the Lord. Praise the now, Lord. the devil said, all these things are given to me. All these things are given to me. 
who gave him who surrendered this world i am sure god will never surrender this world to any devil who surrendered this world to the devil we read in the word of god genesis chapter 1 verse 28 onwards when god created the whole world after creating the whole world jesus god said god blessed them and said god said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over every living thing that moves upon the earth god gave all authority and power in the hand of human being after the creation all authority power everything was rested on human being the human beings were considered as the crown of creation and we had all the power all the authority so what did we do let's continue reading let's continue reading 29 god said see i have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food continue verse 30 and to every beast of the earth to every bird of the air and to every that everything that creeps on the earth everything the breath of life i've given every green plant for food everything is given to human beings that means the whole authority of the whole world was human beings you you we human being had the authority we were in power we were in charge of this but we surrendered everything to the devil through the first sin we handed over everything all authority power everything to the devil now what does jesus do jesus came down the one who created the whole world he came down and he paid the price he paid the price on mount calvary let us read colossian chapter 2 verse 13 colossian chapter 2 verse 13 let us read like this and when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses all our trespasses from the beginning from the genesis till the revelation all the trespasses from the beginning of creation God forgave how continue reading verse 14 erasing the record erasing the record that stood against us Jesus erased the record of sin all the sins that stood against us with its legal demands what is the de- legal demand the devil had demand over us because of the sin that we committed but Jesus erased us he set this aside he set all these demands all this authority the devil had on us on this universe Jesus set this aside nailing to the cross he nailed every authority the devil had on the cross and then was 15 we read was 15 he disarmed he disarmed disarmed means he made them helpless he disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them triumphing over them in it he disarmed all the rulers no evil has got authority today on any human being my dear brothers and sisters that this is the good news you are no more slaves you are set free nobody has got authority on you only jesus christ he disarmed the rulers and authority and made a public example of them triumphing over them in it praise the lord praise the uh, lord. hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise to jesus praise you jesus uh, hallelujah hallelujah therefore we don't need to be worried anymore we don't need to be so defensive you know there are so many people who call and father there is some evil spirit affecting them affecting him affecting her and the family is affected black magic witchcraft all these kinds of fear is there in every many people the lord says my dear brothers and sisters you are delivered you are set free no evil has got authority on you but there is a big problem now the whole world is completely set free by jesus that whole world is completely set by from by jesus that is why after the resurrection when jesus comes in front of the disciples what did jesus say matthew 28 verse 18 
Matthew 28 verse 18 after the resurrection after the death on Mount, G Mount Calvary Jesus came back to the disciples and he said to them and Jesus came and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me this is what the devils told sometime back when he when Jesus was going through the temptation devil said all these things are given to me now Jesus says I have regained all authority all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me now nobody has got authority I have authority I have authority therefore you have authority I give you all authority to you continue reading verse 19 go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and the holy spirit continue was and teaching them to obey everything that i have commanded you and remember i am with you always to the end of the age praise the lord praise the lord. all authority is given my dear brothers and sisters when the authority was surrendered to the devil what happened when the authority surrendered to the devil the devil promised the adam and eve don't worry if you eat this fruit you will become like god you will be another god therefore you don't need to depend on god anymore this is the tendency of many people today they don't need god they want to be god everybody wants to be god they relativism what is relativism what is good and bad i will decide you don't decide this was the sin of adam and eve what did adam and eve do the sin original sin means relativism what does it mean original sin means not about eating a fruit that is only symbolic but the truth is this relativism god you are the creator you your everything is okay but what is good for me and what is bad for me i will decide you don't decide because god has said you are my creations you are my children what is good for you what is bad for you i will decide for you otherwise everything is free for you you can decide whatever you want you can eat every other fruit every other from every other tree but don't eat from the tree of good and bad what does it mean the good and bad i will decide for you because you don't know what is good and bad you don't decide because you are only creatures i know the whole world the whole universe therefore you don't decide what is good for you and what is bad for you praise the lord praise the lord i remember some years ago i just an example suppose we in india we bought uh, 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 bought one car a new car it, uh, the car name is innova car we bought one innova car the the manufacturer of the car is toyota company and when we bought it i got it registered in my name so who is the owner of the car i'm the owner of the car if i am the owner of the car and i bought the car and i got it registered in my name and i drove the car and i brought the car to the retreat center then one week i was driving the car it was a diesel car then after one week i thought of having a change and i started putting petrol in it instead of diesel then somebody came and said father don't do that this is a diesel car don't put petrol i said you keep quiet i paid the money for it now i am the owner i will decide what is good for this and what is bad for this you do you don't decide then i started using petrol and i found something wrong and then and then i thought okay let me change and i started using kerosene in it because that is another different another change for a change i started using kerosene then somebody said father it is not good it is dangerous for the car don't do that i said you keep quiet this is my car i am the owner it is registered in my name i paid money for it therefore i will decide what is good for this car and what is bad for this car you don't decide now to make the story short the car is in the workshop now for the last so many years the car ended up in the workshop it doesn't work anymore then i called the company then company said father you made a mistake when we gave you the car though it's you are the owner you are the it is registered in your name you can do whatever you want to do but there is a book that is given along with that car do you remember 
I said, I said, I said, yes, I remember a manual book. Where is it? I said, I don't know. I kept it somewhere. It's lost. Father, you made a mistake. You should have read it first. There are so many do's and don'ts. There are certain things which is allowed. There are certain things which are not allowed. Which you should follow. Whether it's your car or whether it's registered in your name or not. You have to follow the instructions given in the manual book. Otherwise the car will be in the workshop. Then I thought, I thought once I bought it, once I am the owner, I can do whatever I want. No, I am only an owner. I am not the creator. The manufacturer knows the best. The manufacturer knows the best for the car. Therefore, the company said, no insurance, nothing. No, no, they can't help. My dear brothers and sisters, this is exactly what happens to the human being. We, the human beings, are the creatures created, manufactured by our God. God manufactured these human beings. And God has given us complete freedom. Yes, we have the freedom. This is the car. This is the body created, manufactured by God, registered in the name of Father Joseph Bedat. I am the owner of this body. I am the one who is driving this body. I am, have the full control and full authority on this body. But doesn't mean I can do whatever I want to do with this body. Doesn't mean I can do whatever I want to do with this body because I am not the manufacturer. There is someone else who manufactured this body. And after manufacturing this body, he gave a small manual book. And that manual book is called the Bible. It is written very clearly what is, what is to be done and what not to be done. What is good for me and what is bad for me. If I obey this Bible, it is good for me. If I don't obey, I will end up, I will be ended up in the workshop. Many people are already in the workshop because they think they can do whatever they want to do with their body. They decide what is good for them and what is bad for them. Therefore, they have ended up in the workshops. Many people are permanently in the workshop. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to be free. The devil is lying to us. The devil says, don't worry man, you take this, you decide what is good for you, what is bad for you. Everything will be okay. The other day, one, gen one lady, one gentleman called me and said, Father, this uh, religion, you know, many people in this world, they believe religion and the Christianity, the spirituality, it is meant for the weak people. Those who are weak. That is why most of these religions, most of this spirituality is successful in the poor countries. But in the developed countries, many people, they don't believe in the religion. They don't believe in God because they don't need God. They are not so weak. They are strong. Then I have an argument. Let me tell you, most of the developed countries, depression rate is high. In Australia, in UK, in Europe, in many other countries, depression rate is high. Why? Because no God, no hope. No hope, depression. Once you don't have hope, there is no meaning for life. When there is no, there is no aim for their life, there is no the belief in the life after death, then there is confusion, there is helplessness, there is hopelessness. And the depression rate is increasing. The, even the morality becomes relative. What is good for me, I will decide. But my goodness is not always good for others. Therefore, confusion. Therefore, there is no compassion. There is no mercy. There is no true love. The love definition, they will decide. Compassion definition, each one will decide. This will not work, my dear brothers and sisters. This will bring disorder. That is why the moment we forget God, the disorder is increasing in this world. So devil lied to the Adam and Eve said, if you disobey, you will become God. You will become like God. Praise the Lord. Praise they the Lord. disobeyed. Once they disobeyed, everything was against them. The land, Jesus, God said, because of you, the land will be cursed. The devil lied. The devil did not... Tell them the land will be cursed if you commit sin. He hid these aspects. 
the land was cursed they have to work hard even though they work hard the land did not produce fruits but instead thistles and thorns only the thistles and thorns were produced the land was against them nature was against them other human beings were against them if you know, if you know the bible when cain committed sin because of the sin of cain god said because of your sin the land is cursed the land will not accept you vomit you out the land will vomit you out wherever you go you will not be at peace my dear brothers and sisters when we come deny god then when we forget god when we deny god and when we believe in the relativism and decide what is good for us and what is bad for us when we decide the four kinds of relationship will be broken the land will be the nature will be against you you have become an enemy of god your prayers will not be heard there won't be a response from heaven because your sins are blocking the presence of god we read isaiah 59 was 1 and 2 Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 See the Lord's hand is not too short to save nor his ear too dull to hear rather your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God your sins have hidden his face from you so that he, he does not hear your sins will be blocking God so there will be block with God there is a there is a separation between you and God there is a separation between you and the nature there is a separation between yourself you will get angry very fast get irritated very fast get disturbed very fast you cannot accept your husband you cannot accept your wife that is why adam could not accept wife eve adam hate adam accused the wife cain accused the abel fight all these accusations started the relationship between your brother sister will be broken relationship with yourself will be broken and all these four kinds of relationship will be broken the devil did not tell these things devil only said you will become like god a small small gods where we are in charge we decide what is good what is bad but we will have we will lose all the powers all the supernatural powers will be lost that is why my dear brothers and sisters there are so many people so called so many rich people powerful people powerful countries but the people are struggling they have no control on themselves M many people are in depression suicidal tendency fear they are afraid of everything they can't even relate to people there is no peace there is no joy there is no happiness lots of confusion this is called bondage why what is bondage means when we commit sin when we go against the teaching of the lord bible against the manual book which god has given us against the manual book if you go against the manual book there will be disorder if i use my car against the manual book there will be disorder for my car the same way the more we do go against the manual book that is bible there will be disorder in our personal life disorder in our relationship disorder in our family and then slowly this disorder will become permanent that is called bondage for example you know my dear brothers and sisters when you commit a sin the sin affects first it enters into the body slowly it controls your mind and then it controls the soul body mind and soul will be controlled praise the lord praise the lord how does the sin enters into your body how does a person get bondage a evil bondage the beginning of bondage is a lie he knowingly or unknowingly when he listens to a lie through the lies the evil one will come inside of you behind every sin you will see a lie behind every sin there is a lie whether you understand or not behind every sin there is a lie through this lie the evil one will have a small footage in your in your body he will step into your body through a lie for example every somebody looks at you and say you're good for nothing somebody looks at you and say you're not good looking if you believe this lie suddenly you will feel rejected you will feel wounded a small disorder will start growing inside of your body 
but what is the truth the truth is this god has already told you you are created in my image and likeness you are precious to me your names are written on my palm your mother may forget you father may forget you but i will not forget you these are the truths and truths are in the bible nobody wants to read bible nobody wants to quote the bible the truths are these in this manual book which god has created god has given us after creating us the truths are here if you want to know the truths about a car you have to read the manual book just because an expert comes and tells you don't believe it go and read it then you will come to know the categories the capacities the every detail of the car is there written in the manual book many people they don't read the manual book the truth but they listen to the people the liar the liar is giving you lies therefore every sin behind every sin there is a lie don't listen to the lie if you listen to the lie lie will enter inside of you once the lie enters inside of you the second thing that happens in your life is fear if lies enters inside the fear comes fear suppose somebody says you are useless you are not good you are you are good for nothing then you believe it if you believe then fear will enter inside i am useless i'm good for nothing who will accept me who will believe me what will be my future who will accept me who will understand me the fear will enter inside once the fear enters inside the next step sorrow next step sorrow then you will be so depressed dis- disappointed you will be sorrowful you are not happy all your happiness slowly slowly will disappear the more you listen to the lies the more the fear enters and the more fear enters sorrow enters praise the lord praise the lord there are many people suppose you are listening to only negative 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 things then you will become gloomy there will be fear inside there will be sorrow inside there will be confusion inside praise the lord praise the once lord. the once the sorrow come inside you will be disturbed inside fear and sorrow come inside you will be disturbed then suddenly you need some consolation some consolation some support some happiness then you will look around for some happiness some happiness therefore every small small things will be a temptation for you every small small things will be a temptation small enjoyment small smoking small drugging dr- drugs and small 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 things will become a temptation for you so you have seen the process first lies the lies will enter inside through the lies fear will come inside through fear sorrows will come inside through the sorrow you will start searching for happiness if you are not happy inside you will search for happiness from outside if you are happy inside if god is present inside if jesus is present inside you are happy inside you will never search for happiness from outside because you are already happy inside praise the lord praise, praise the lord, the lord. Praise the hallelujah. Lord. hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus then this lie will lead you to fear fear will lead you to sorrow sorrow will be, lead you to temptation and temptation slowly once you fall fallen into temptation then you will be oppressed by it you will be oppressed by it that is called oppression once you are oppressed by it once you controlled by it then it will be slowly you it will lead you to depression and lead, the depression will lead you to obsession and at the end obsession will lead you to possession that means slowly slowly it enters inside of you it controls your body controls your mind at the end controls your whole soul the whole body and mind and soul will be controlled and that is when a po- person is really possessed until then these different processes lies fear sorrow temptation oppression and obsession depression and possession and all these different processes praise the lord praise uh, the hallelujah lord. hallelujah how do we what happens when you are controlled once the evil one consol- controls you for example if you can commit a sin with your eyes your eye will be controlled you are surrendering your eye in the hand of the devil 
let us read this passage let us read this word of god we read like this ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 you were dead through the trust sorry you were dead through the trespasses and sins continue in which you once lived following the course of this world following the ruler of the power of the air the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient word of god says some time back you followed the spirit of this world you followed the evil one this spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient that means if anybody is disobedient the spirit is active in them if anybody is disobedient the spirit is active in them what happens when the spirit is active many people think if if you join with the evil spirit you will become powerful that is another lie of the devil if you join with the evil spirit you will be a loser everywhere because the devil is a loser from the beginning he he is a liar therefore he hides the fact you know for a moment you will feel you are winning but you will never be a winner but you will be a loser because he hides this aspect of losing from you he is blinding you praise the lord praise hallelujah the lord. hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise to jesus praise you jesus and he says this when you are disobedient the spirit is there at work in that person if you are disobedient with your eyes if you watch unholy videos with your eyes your eyes will be surrendered to the devil evil one he is in authority of your eyes that is why with these eyes you cannot read bible even if you want to read you will postpone 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 and in case if you start reading you will not read more than 5 minutes because your eyes cannot tolerate your eyes won't be interested in your eyes will feel sleepy even when you sit for adoration and worship you cannot look at the blessed sacrament more than one or two minutes because you ca- your eyes cannot fall tolerate your eyes cannot focus on the eucharist you will be distracted you will look here and there you will look somewhere else not on the eucharist because your eyes cannot accept it because your eyes is controlled by evil you have surrendered your eyes to the evil one let us read ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 onwards ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 be angry do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger be angry but do not sin do not let the sun go down on your anger and was 27 and do not make room for the devil what does it mean when you angry when you commit sin you are giving a room for the devil what does it mean when you angry when you commit a sin you have given authority in that area for the devil he will come and take rest he will and he will come and ac- start accommodation he will start the accommodation in that area if you have given your eyes for sin he will make accommodation in your eyes he will make room there if you have given ear surrendered your ears to the devil he will make accommodation here he will make a room here if you commit a sin of lust he will make a room there wherever you commit sin that area that aspect will be controlled by the devil that is why bible says do not make room for the devil do not make room for the devil this is very important my dear brothers and sisters let us read one one more passage which i already told you sometime back but for those who are new to this retreat so please listen this word of god gospel of matthew chapter 12 verse 43 onwards gospel of matthew chapter 4 sorry uh, 12 verse 43 onwards we read like this when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place the devil always search for a resting place because he always wants to take rest and then he is searching for a resting place but it finds none and then you know when an unclean spirit goes out of a person suppose if he come if you come for a, a retreat and the moment you start retreat the unclean spirit will go out and then the the unclean spirit will be wandering here and there 
in the waterless regions and then after some time he doesn't find anyone then he says like this i will return to my house from which i came the devil says i will return to my house what does it mean even when he leaves you he knows you are his house he knows he has claim on you he knows he has claim on you he has claim he has some authority in you many people think once they get once the evil spirit has gone out they are delivered not necessarily there is a home of the devil inside of us knowingly or unknowingly it is there already how do you know whether there is a home of the devil inside there are many people who are into ministry who are a preachers who are doing lots of good things and uh, so called spiritual being spiritual people but need not be completely delivered how do we know in their weak moments the weakness will come out in their weak moments they will be proud of their past sins there are so many people like this i know one person who, who was leading an evil life a terrible life later he got converted after attending a retreat he had a conversion he repented and lots of uh, healings took place in his life and then he started giving testimony and he started giving counseling and he was with the gift of tongue so many blessings so many gifts everyone believed him everyone believed him and everyone was okay with him we also thought he is okay he is fine uh, he is completely out of the sin and he is completely out of all evil and he is now leading a spiritual life he was full of prayer always sitting in front of the blessed sacrament always with the rosary always with the bible in his hand and always prayerful every time he is repeating prayers making everyone to repeat prayer but one day i happened to see him fighting with uh, shouting at another team member i was watching from behind he didn't see me but he was shouting at the other team member shouting at him and said you don't know who i was he was threatening the other team member and said you don't know who i was you don't know how many people i used to threaten you don't know i used to keep a gun here you don't know anything about me if you want to no go and ask my friends they will tell you who i was and he was speaking boasting about his past sinful life what does it mean though he seems to be converted the devil's house is still there in his home in his body my dear brothers and sisters when you are thinking of your past sins and boasting of when you think of your past sins and enjoy it remember it's a clear sign the devil's home is still there in our home in our body god wants us to destroy this devil's home that is why we read revelation chapter chapter 2 was one onwards can you read revelation chapter 2 was one onwards to the angel of the church in ephesus right to the angel of the church in ephesus right these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks among the seven golden lampstands was to i know your works you know god says i know your works because he's very he is a sincere worker uh, sincerely working for god god said i know your works your toil your patient endurance i know that you cannot tolerate evil doers i know you cannot tolerate evil doers i knew, know your works your toil your patient endurance you have tested those continue you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and i have found them to be false i know you i know your hard work i know your i know your toils i know your patient endurance i know all your commitment i know you hate all the evil doers i cannot tolerate any evil i know every detail was 30 uh, sorry was next word third was third i also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary i know all these good things then fourth one was for but i have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had first what does it mean he is very god says 
I know your work. I know your patience. I know your love. I know your commitment. You hate evil doers, and you're so good. But one thing is lacking: love. That means the devil's home is still there. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters. those who are controlled their body is controlled by the evil one in every aspect by different sin when the body is is controlled by evil they will not be able to surrender their body to the lord the body cannot worship god their body cannot worship god though their mind want to sit in the chapel the body will not sit though their mind wanted to pray the body cannot pray though the mind and spirit wants to uh, uh, worship god the body will be restless body will be reacting because body is controlled praise the lord praise hallelujah. hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus. praise you jesus praise you let jesus. us read this word of god romans chapter 7 verse 25 romans chapter 7 verse 25 we read like this thanks to be, thanks be to god through jesus christ our lord so then with my mind i am a slave to the law of god with my mind i am completely surrendered to god with my mind i am a slave to the law of god but with my flesh i am a slave to the law of sin with my flesh i am a slave to the law of the sin everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin john 8:40 34 john 8:34 we read everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin very truly i tell you everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin my dear brothers and sisters they want be free they cannot desire what they want really truly they want to to surrender their life to the lord with their body but the body won't be ready some people even the mind is controlled by evil what has, what happens if the mind is also controlled if the mind is controlled then you cannot think of anything about god everything about god is boring for you everything about spiritual life is boring for you everything about god is useless for you everything about god is meaningless for you that is why many people question god they don't want spirituality they don't like spirituality and they go for wrong spiritualities yoga and other other kinds of spiritualities thinking that it will give them peace praise the lord praise uh, hallelujah lord. hallelujah let us read roman chapter 118 roman chapter 118 we read like this roman chapter 1 verse 18 right now as you are listening to the word of god the lord is opening your ears somebody who has got pain in your right ear and hearing problem the lord is healing you right now your ears are open now in jesus name let us read this word of god we romans chapter 1 verse 18 for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wickedness suppress the truth many people once they are evil mind is controlled by evil they suppress the truth they suppress the truth they don't want to tell the whole world what is the truth they hide the truth in the name of truth they they spread wrongs lies this is what happens in the world my dear brothers and sisters jesus never did anything wrong to this world jesus never taught us to hate anybody jesus always spoke about forgiveness compassion mercy love and all these things but why many countries are afraid of christianity why the christian church christian hospitals and schools are removing crucifix from the rooms why people are ashamed and afraid to tell the others i am a christian why people are afraid to use the name of jesus in their working places even in the christian countries why the governments are not supporting it why are they afraid of because why what of god says they suppress the truth they suppress the truth but instead they will promote many things else many other things many other religious beliefs but not the truth truth should be suppressed there is only one truth that is christianity only one truth that is jesus jesus said i am the truth 
we suffer everyone else everyone is trying to suppress this truth and promote other lies of this world my dear brothers and sisters let's continue reading verse 19 for what can be known about god is plain to them what about god everything is plain to them because god has shown it to them god has shown it to them continue reading verse 20 ever since the creation of the world his eternal power and divine nature invisible though they are have been understood the nature of god is understood next one continue and seen through the things he has made so they are without excuse the word of god's existence is revealed to the whole humanity through the created things if you look into the creatures if you look into human body how the human body functions if you look into a small virus how the whole humanity is frightened of is frightened of in front of a small virus it's a clear sign there is a creator create create creator behind all these if you look into the world the way the whole universe is functioning the the orbit on which the earth is going around the sun the whole planet system all solar system all the clusters all universe if you look into all these things and study these forget about the universe just study your body the way the whole human body functions how can you deny the existence of god bible says very clearly the presence of god the existence of god is plain to them through the created things everything is plain but they suppress the truth Therefore, they are without excuse. Verse 21. Verse 21, we read like this. They are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not honor him as God. Many people, they knew God. They, though they knew God, but they don't honor God as God. Praise the Lord. Praise there the are Lord. many people who believe. They are believers. And they say, but I don't practice, Father. My dear brothers and sisters, Bible says very clearly, there are many people, they know there is a God, but they don't practice. We read, though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their senseless minds were darkened. Their senseless minds were darkened. Verse 22, verse 22 we read, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being or birds or four-footed four, four, four animals or reptiles. My dear brothers and sisters, then we will go for other non-existing uh, beliefs, non-gods and all these kinds of things. My dear brothers and sisters, therefore, this is what happens once we deny God. Let us read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among saints. Verse 4. Entirely out of places of sin, silly and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. My dear brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not, sometimes when we think of our past sins and enjoy it, it's a clear sign the devil's home is still there in our, in our body. We have to destroy this home. Why do we need to destroy this home? Why do we need to get this bondage out of our body? Because we read like this, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 16 onwards. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 16 onwards. Let us read this passage. Avoid profane ch chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety. If you enter into wrong, wrong chatting, it will lead you into impiety. Verse 17. Verse 17, continue reading. And their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenius and Philetus. Bible says it will be like gangrene. It will, you know, every cell will die just like a cancer. Like a cancer, the sin will slowly, slowly take hold of your body. 
like a cancer first it will enter through eyes ears nose tongue some part of your body father through the five senses the evil will sin will enter inside and it will be like gangrene the cancer it will start spreading throughout the body and take control of your mind and take control of your soul and their talk will spread like gangrene okay continue uh, verse 18 Oh, who have swerved okay let us read was 20 was 20 we read like this in a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for special use some for ordinary use my dear brothers and sisters in a large house so many utensils some are gold some are silver some are wood and some are clay the golden ones and silver ones are for special use the others are for you ordinary use what does god want god wants to use all of us as for special use so that what are we supposed to do we all should be pure and gold and silver and therefore god purify us verse 21 verse 21 we read all who cleanse themselves of the things i have mentioned will become special utensils dedicated and useful to the owner of the house ready for every good work my dear brothers and sisters as long as the devil's home is there still in us we will be used only for waste things ordinary things useless things because we are not pure there are evil afflictions still there are many people say father i want to serve god I want to be an evangelist I want to heal people deliver and I have to be standing for God my dear brothers and sisters God wants to use all of you that is the message of the Lord I you should go to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel this is the message of the Lord everybody should be evangelist but there are so many who knows the bible so many who are, reads the bible so many wants to serve God but why are they not selected why are they not chosen because there are so many areas to be delivered there are so many areas to be cleansed all who cleanse themselves of the things i have mentioned will become special utensils dedicated and useful to the owner of the house ready for every good work praise the lord praise my the dear lord. brothers and sisters that is why we have this deliverance retreat arranged for all of you my dear brothers and sisters wherever you are you are able to attend this deliverance retreat and the lord is going to use you powerfully and the lord is going to use you for the special work but the lord wants you to cooperate therefore give away every sinful bondage every bad habits every wrong things let's all kindly stand in the presence of god wherever you are promise to god that we will be a special utensil in the hands of god so that god can use us for a good work if there is any evil in us let everything be cleansed by our lord jesus remember all those who are participating in this deliverance retreat remember one thing there are more than 100000 fastings are done around the world so many people have done fasting and prepared for this retreat and you are going to harvest the blessings of from this retreat cooperate in the presence of god if you are addicted to any bad habits any wrong thing wrong things and wrong relationships any evil bondage any unforgiveness any sin that you are proud of your past sins make sure to promise to god that you give away everything let us focus on the eucharist The Lord is here right now. The Lord is looking at you. Promise to God. Lord, I give up my bad habits. I give up my watching dirty dirty video habit, smoking habit, drinking habit, wrong relationship which are not happy which you are not happy with. Lord, I just give it away completely. Not for one month, not for one week and just to test to God. But I give it up completely totally because it is not good for me. I want deliverance lord I want complete deliverance everybody take a decision my dear brothers and sisters only if you cooperate with god 
only with if you cooperate with god deliverance will happen don't test god saying okay let me see if god can deliver me or not don't test god just cooperate with god you take the first step when the prodigal son took the first step god took five steps take take your first step because already god has taken the first step on mount calvary now it's your turn now you take that next step then the lord will take five steps and come to you and he will help you let us repent of all our sins look at the blessed sacrament and worship him as a sacrament feel the lord is here with you wherever you are the lord is with you lord you know that we have fasted we have come because we know we cannot overcome our habits without you there is no one in this world who can help us lord how many years how long we are struggling there is no one who can help us lord you know how much we hate sin we hate sin from the bottom of our hearts but these sins are not leaving us lord that's why we have come with fasting with prayer with penances with sacrifices lord come to us shake the mountains and lord jesus divide the heavens come down as you have come down as the fire and burnt every sacrifice we have come to you there is victory only in you deliver us o lord shake the mountains break the walls apart open the heavens almighty god you are overcomer defender of our heart together let's claim Lord, we love you. We praise you. Let everyone, anywhere in the world, touch the Lord, deliver them, wash them in your blood, set them free, set them free, Lord, wash them in your blood, help them, Lord. Shabbat shalom, Lord. Shabbat shalom, Lord. 
sacrament let's feel his presence is here with us we are here because we know we cannot get out of our habits without his grace without his intervention this is a deliverance retreat where we are asking the lord to go to the root causes of our behaviors and deliver us let's ask please pray after me my lord jesus my lord jesus please come to me please come to me come inside me come inside me transform me transform me the same way the same way you transformed you transformed sakeus sakeus the prodigal son the prodigal son matthew matthew saul saul david david mary magdalene mary magdalene oh my lord oh my lord i beg you i beg you come to me come to me transform me transform me you said you said you said you said if the sun makes you free if the sun makes you free you'll be free in tea you will be free in tea my jesus my jesus i know very well i know very well no one in this world no one in this world no medicine no medicine no doctor no doctor no science no science no technology no technology can set me free can set me free it's only you it's only you my jesus my jesus i trust in you i trust in you set me free set me free cleanse me cleanse me i belong to you i belong to you Hallelujah. 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 Kindly be seated. We are on this deliverance retreat, sisters and brothers, and in this retreat, let us seek God's intervention. We were just praying as Father Joseph was preaching and what the Lord was reminding about when we talk about deliverance, we have to know every sin, every behavior that we are into is rooted in certain sins and that is why when jesus was delivering a person called mary magdalene we read this is in the gospel of mark chapter 16 verse 9 we read how the lord is delivering martha this is gospel of mark let's read chapter 16 verse 9 now After he rose early on the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons now Mary Magdalene became an apostle of apostles a servant of God because 
Jesus delivered her from seven demons. And which are these seven demons? These are the seven cardinal sins. Cardinal sins does not mean the sins committed by cardinal. That means capital sin, deadly sins. If we look into any manifestation, any problem, any struggle, that people are struggling with alcohol, people struggle with pornography, people struggle with anger, people struggle with some kind of manifestations. And they know, even people who are sick, and they cannot get out of this sickness, even they take medicine, and medicine cannot help them. So you are all attending this retreat with great hope, thinking if there is a deliverance prayer that is being made, you will be getting out of this particular sickness, this particular manifestation, this particular bad habit. But the Lord, the Lord is here to do something greater, something higher, and something more important for your life. Now, what did exactly God do to convert Mary Magdalene? Remember, she was a sinner woman, hated by others. Maybe she hated herself. Maybe she was in the pit of sin. Now, the Lord is coming and setting her free. How? By delivering her from seven demons. And who are these demons? I told you these are the seven cardinal sins. They are anger, pride, laziness, jealousy, lust, greed, and gluttony and these seven demons sisters and brothers if you look into every capital sin the root of every capital sin is fear because devil is a deceiver it is fear for example what is uh, pride it's a fear of committing yourself fear of giving up yourself fear of giving up your independence what is greed fear of detachment what is laziness fear of commitment what is lust fear of becoming a child what is uh, jealousy this is fear of loving then what is anger fear of getting hurt that means every uh, sin every cardinal sin is rooted in fear if fear is the root cause of all these cardinal sins or the root causes of our bondage, then what is the, uh, how to overcome it? The fruit is love. If fear is the cause, love is what helps us to overcome these habits. That's why we read, this is 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. You can repeat with me together, wherever you are, kindly repeat. There is no fear in love you can repeat with me there is no fear in love but perfect love cuts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love once again there is no fear in love but perfect love cuts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love that means the more is the love the more is the less is the fear the more is the power of god coming the more you will be delivered from all these bad habits that is destroying you that is blocking you to produce a fruit we have to know there are so many people they get angry and within no time they say i'm very sorry that means there is a spirit behind this anger that means this evil is not permitting them to get out of it. That means what I am saying, when we are asking for deliverance, actually we need deliverance from anger, pride, jealousy, lust, laziness, greed and gluttony. Once you get deliverance from these seven spirits, these are spirits, these are not just ideas or some bad habits or small sins. These are the spirits that is giving us these bondages. That means if somebody says, I don't want to get angry, but I feel angry. There are people who say, I don't, I hate alcohol. I, I don't like to drink alcohol, but I am tempted to take this alcohol. That means there's a root, there's a spirit working behind. That is why we need deliverance from all these spirits that is true deliverance basically uh, we always say here there when i was in africa in kenya he, devil is like malaria 
But now we can say he is like coronavirus. Why? What, how it manifests and what is the root cause is so different. For example, if you get malaria, sometimes malaria can be uh, seen with headache, sometimes it's with fever, sometimes it's with back pain, sometimes it's with loose motion. But it will never be uh, visible the same way. Now, for example, if somebody is affected by coronavirus, it can be manifested with a cough, with a cold, with a chest infection, with some kind of a fever. But it's only when you check you will understand. Now, these days, if somebody gets cough, then you will immediately think it, this is corona. But you cannot know it unless you get tested. We know when it comes to satanic afflictions, why people get confused because they don't know why this person is manifesting. And here I am saying every sin the Catholic Church teaches is rooted in a capital sin. And we should know, we should never hate a sinner, we hate sin. We are praying for deliverance from a person from these bad habits. We love the sinner and we hate sin. But unfortunately, we human beings, we have a tendency to love sin and hate sinners. Jesus was just the opposite. For example, one day one boy, he came for prayers and he was telling his problem is anger. He gets angry for small things. And he said, I got this anger because of my mom. I hate my mom. That means his anger is rooted in hatred towards his mom. Because his mom was very angry, upset, mistreating him. That's why he's telling he's so angry. Because mother is getting angry, he is hating the mother. Then we told him, you should not hate your mother. You have to hate the sin of anger. That means what is making your mother to get angry is a spirit of anger. You have to hate that habit of anger and you should not get angry like your mother. Now what is happening? Devil is a deceiver. With this habit that's there in mother, you are hating mother who is actually a victim of anger. Sisters and brothers, as we are praying for this deliverance retreat, we have to accept, even me as I preach to you, we need deliverance, which is an ongoing process. This deliverance is not just for a physical healing. This, is, this, this should not be just for a kind of a breakthrough in our financial bondage or from some kind of getting out of some hereditary problems or some kind of childlessness or marriage blocks. These can all be rooted in some kind of bondage. But we have to know something beyond. That means we need deliverance from these spirits which are these spirits cardinal sins and now i am going to help you with all these with first i will say what is this sin then i will tell you how to get out of it with a word that jesus made on the cross now for example if your problem is anger let us look i have already told you the spirit of anger when we look into the spirit of anger the root is fear of forgiving that means for every spirit the root of this spirit how this spirit is holding on to us fear fear of forgiving anger is rooted in fear of forgiving fear that if i forgive i will be hurt again if i forgive it's like a humiliation i will be again mistreated but we have to know how to get out of this anger? The first thing, we should meditate on the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the gift of piety. That means love for Abba Father. And with this love of the Abba Father, we love our brothers and our sisters. Love for Abba Father means getting to know who is Abba Father and what is his character. Gift of piety helps us to know who is Abba Father. Now we know the character of Abba Father. Let's read. This is Luke chapter 6 verse 35. The character of Abba Father. The almighty, the all-powerful Abba Father never got angry. We read. Love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Read, repeat with me. He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. You can repeat after me. 
He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked, who is the Almighty Father. He has all the reason to get angry, but he is kind. Why? And kindness is more powerful than anger. That means you should have this gift of piety to piety to Abba Father. This is piety means definitely it is devotion and uh, imitation of abba father and his character and again we read in gospel of matthew chapter 5 verse 5 we read in the scripture that blessed are the meek they will inherit L repeat with me blessed, blessed are, are the, the meek, meek for they, they will, will inherit, inherit the earth. earth where the world is talking if you are not getting angry if you are not bold people can dominate you maybe you are a wife you get angry why because you feel if you don't get angry, your husband may dominate you. He will always command. He will just misuse you. He will just take advantage of you. But the scripture is telling just the opposite. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. More blessed are those who are meek, those who never get angry. That means you need to overcome the spirit of anger with a grace given from Abba Father. Then we have to meditate the word of Jesus. This is Luke. This is chapter 23, verse 34. How, what is the approach of Jesus? He prayed together with me. Jesus said, Father, Father forgive, forgive them, them for, for they, they do, do not, not know what, what they, they are doing, doing and their cast lost to divide his clothing. clothing. He prayed, forgive them. Remember, Jesus is all powerful, almighty. He has all the reason to hold on to this anger, this bitterness, but he is just praying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That means if you are struggling with this habit of anger, you sit before Abba Father and you will be so much touched by this kindness and the gentleness of Abba Father where he is kind to the wicked and he is kind even to the ungrateful. And you see Jesus being tortured by people according to St. Bridget of Sweden. There was more than 5,430 wounds in the body of Jesus and still Jesus is praying, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing and we need and we should know again every sin is a fallen virtue every sin is a fallen virtue that means the absence of meekness is anger that means you don't want to fight against this spirit of anger you need the gift of meekness to get out of anger that means you need to pray for the virtues of meekness, gentleness, and patience. Repeat after me the, gifts, the virtues you need. Meekness, gentleness, and patience. Repeat. Meekness, gentleness, and patience. To overcome. To overcome. Anger. Anger. That means where there is light, there is no darkness. When you pray for deliverance, do you need deliverance from anger? It's more important than deliverance from a kind of sickness. Sisters and brothers, cancer can only kill your body. But anger can cast you into hell. This, this is what Jesus taught the apostles. They were thinking that what's more important is physical healing. But Jesus knew what's more important is the salvation of their soul. Sin is more dangerous than sickness. We were having a retreat in, this is in Maputo, in Mozambique, and we asked them, that's the time God gave us this message, because there are so many who are affected by AIDS, HIV positive. We asked them, uh, how many of you think that those who have AIDS will go to, those who have AIDS, those, they will go to heaven or hell? We asked them. Some answered they may go to heaven. Some said they may go to hell. Uh, some said if they repent, they will go to heaven. Then we asked them, those who knowingly committed a sin and they got infected with AIDS, they will go to heaven or hell? Then they said, if they have knowingly committed uh, sin and they got infected, they will go to hell. Then we told them, these answers are not right because prodigal son knowingly committed sin, but father forgave him. For every sin, sisters and brothers, there is forgiveness if you repent. Even if you committed it knowingly or unknowingly. And we told them AIDS, it's a sickness. It's a sickness. It can only kill your body. If somebody have AIDS, that does not mean they will go to hell. 
this is only for their body. If they repent, God can heal them, God can forgive them, God can save them. Then we ask them, those who get angry, those who keep hatred, and those who hold on to it, what will happen? They will go to heaven or hell? Then they said that we don't know the answer. We told them, the scripture says, those who get angry, they will go to hell. They are liable to the fires of hell. That means hatred is more dangerous than AIDS. Anger is more dangerous than cancer. Maybe we always pity people who have sickness, but we have to be more pitiful to people who are angry, who are proud, who are lazy, who are lustful, who are greedy, who have into gluttony. Sisters and brothers, that's why this deliverance retreat, if you have ever thought that you need deliverance to have a financial breakthrough, you need deliverance to have a physical sickness, your good Lord is more serious he's more generous more concerned he's looking at your spiritual your eternal your eternal welfare that's why he wants you to get out of it if you have the spirit of anger and if you really thirst for deliverance the first thing you need the gift of piety the second thing you need to cast it that means your anger has come upon jesus that's why he had 5430 wounds that is the expression of your anger the anger of your husband your wife your children your subordinates your co-workers every anger of every human person came upon jesus that's why john the pa baptist pointed to jesus and he exclaimed john 1 29 this behold this is the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world remember your sin has come upon jesus your anger has deliverance in jesus in his body in his crucifixion surrender it to jesus that's why the meditation of the word of jesus on the cross is so much important to get deliverance from anger and we should have a prayer the prayer is you can pray after me abba father, abba father for you all things are possible for you all things are deliver possible deliver me from anger deliver me from anger and fill me with meekness and fill me with meekness abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness daily 50 times you have to pray if you need deliverance because this is an ongoing process. As long as you live until the last breath, these spirits are there all over and you need to overcome and you know there is no medicine to get out of anger. The medicine is the virtue of meekness. If Abba, the almighty Abba Father was meek, it is it's a grace, it's the strength to be meek, to be gentle, to be patient. Let no one misguide us. Those who are gentle are more powerful than those who are angry. Saint Francis D. Sale said, you can catch more flies with one drop of, one drop of honey than a big bottle of vinegar. You can catch more people with gentleness. You can convert more people with gentleness. You can influence your husband with a gentle smile than your angry face. He will run away. We try all these letters. We need deliverance, sisters and brothers, from these habits. Now, to overcome anger, what we need, the first thing we should know, what is anger? This is fear of forgiving. You should not be feared to forgive because Jesus forgave. Second thing, you need the virtues to overcome anger. The virtues are gentleness, meekness, and patience. And you need to meditate what Jesus prayed on the cross. Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And you need the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a free gift, gift of counsel. What is this gift of counsel? Take, uh, the gift of piety. What is this gift of piety? Love for Abba Father, love for your neighbor. And following what Father has done. And you need to pray the prayer. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. For me nothing is possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness. Now, let's go to pride. And pride, what is pride? Absence of humility. Pride is the fear of submitting your will to another. Submitting your, your will to a human person or even to God. 
is the fear of depending on someone fear of depending on god sisters and brothers jesus said this is john 15:5 you are i am the vine and you are the branches and you can do nothing apart from me please repeat after me i can do nothing i can do nothing apart from you my jesus apart from you my jesus i am a branch I am a branch. You are the vine. You are the vine. Abba Father. Abba Father. For you all things are possible. For you all things are possible. Deliver me from pride. Deliver me from pride. And fill me with the humility. And fill me with humility. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from pride. Deliver me from pride. And fill me with humility. And fill me with humility. And we need the gift of counsel. Gift of counsel from the Holy Spirit to overcome pride. What is this gift of counsel? to get counseling to get direct advice from abba father from the lord from the holy spirit because 1 peter 5 5 we read what is the great advantage of humility sisters and brothers we know with our own power we can only commit sin in the same way we read together in the same way you who oh are younger must, must accept, accept the authority, authority of, of the, the elders, elders and all of you, you must, must clothe, clothe yourselves yourself. we continue with, with humility, humility in your in dealings, dealings with, with one, one another, another. For, god for god opposes the, space, the proud but, but gives grace, grace to, to the, the humble. humble gives grace to the humble see why this ordinary woman a girl and young girl called mary became the mother of god because she was lowly she was humble humility attracts god's grace if grace is everything saint therese of child jesus teaches everything is grace everything is grace if i am standing in front of you if i am preaching the word of god if you are listening the word of god if you have taken fasting it's all grace and how you will get grace through humility that means those who are proud can never grow in holiness can never get the gift of uh, grace from the lord that means to overcome the spirit of pride we need the gift of counsel and we need to meditate what jesus said on the cross mark 15:34 why cross cross is the answer of deliverance is cross who brought brought deliverance and freedom mark 15:34 jesus said he was totally dependent on our father see jesus was when he was just 12 years he was teaching pharisees sadducees and high priests he had all the freedom to be independent to be alone and to dictate his own things he was a miracle worker he was a way maker he was a promise keeper he was god he was word made flesh he was the alpha the omega the prince of peace but he decided to submit himself to abba father and he prayed my god my god why have you forsaken me please repeat with me my god, god my god, god why, why have, have you forsaken, forsaken me? me he is sisters and brothers he is giving himself unto the father that he his greatest pain the spiritual father say the greatest pain of jesus was the separation to abba father but sin when our sins came upon jesus he was to be separated from abba father that means he really carried our sin that is why he felt this pain of separation this was his greatest pain that he was feeling forsaken but he held on to abba father and we need the, the gifts i told you the gift of humility the virtues virtues of humility virtue of obedience and virtue of gratitude if you need to overcome the spirit of pride if you need deliverance from pride you need gift of gratitude that if you, wherever you are whatever you are is god who brought you david is known as a king after the heart of jesus why he made a beautiful prayer this is 1 chronicles chapter 17 verse 16 1 chronicles 17 16 the prayer of king david he prayed in this way you can repeat with me who am i o lord god who am i o lord god? and what is my house and what is my house that you have brought me thus far that you have brought me thus far who am i o lord god who am i o and lord what god? is my house and what is my that house? you have brought me thus far that you have brought me thus far if you say that your children are pure gift from god is not your quality that your efficiency that you have children when you acknowledge lord it's your mercy that brought me this far it's your mercy that gave me a house gave me 
children gave me job gave me money when you have the spirit of gratitude you are getting deliverance from the spirit of pride and you need even the spirit of obedience actually disobedience is a sign of pride why many marriages are broken why there is divorce why there is separation where there is pride a husband cannot submit to the wife where there is pride a wife cannot submit to the husband do you feel irritated when your husband talks something especially when he is jobless that means there is a spirit of pride attacking you you need deliverance more than your husband maybe you are thinking your husband is an alcoholic he need deliverance maybe the wife you are crying and praying lord even in this retreat help my husband to stop alcohol and the lord is telling my daughter you need more deliverance because you are under the spell of pride you need more deliverance than your husband who is an alcoholic it it can kill his body but remember this pride is it's more serious than cancer it is killing and eating up your soul like corona is eating our lungs this pride is eating our soul that means we need deliverance from pride more than even other habits pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are deliver possible deliver me from pride deliver me from and fill pride. me with your humility and fill me with your humility and now the spirit of lust we need deliverance from the spirit of lust and, and, and what is lust actually it's a fear of being a child fear of being as pure as a child fear of depending on a mother a child needs a mother sisters and brothers in order to overcome the spirit of lust we need mother mary that's why the spiritual fathers put forward the prayer of jesus on the cross this is john 1927 as a remedy to overcome the spirit of lust for deliverance from lust we need true devotion to blessed virgin mary so jesus when he was on the cross he said he said to the disciple repeat with me here is your mother here is your mother when juan diego when mother mary appeared to juan diego in guadalupe this is what mother mary told him am i not here your mother why are you afraid why are you sad why are you distressed am i not here your mother sisters and brothers anyone who has a true devotion to blessed virgin mary they will overcome the spirit of lust there are many who are struggling to overcome the spirit of lust because they have impure curiosity they cannot control their eyes the ears now this is an era of social media every kind of impurity is on your fingertips and people are so much being tempted and people cause sin to others and anyone who pray the rosary have a devotion have taken mary as their mother will overcome this spirit because mother mary is the mother most pure mother most chaste mother undefiled the most virgin the most holy virgin the most chaste and mother mary will will put insert inside you the spirit of purity sanctity and holiness and you cannot get deliverance from the spirit of lust from any kind of medicine available in this world you need devotion to mother mary this is what jesus have proved and gave us this gift of mother and it's at the foot of the cross where the mother can see her son suffering and going through the pain and she is giving us this grace and also we need in order to overcome the spirit of lust we need the virtues of chastity modesty and tem- and temperance you can pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from lust deliver me from lust and fill me with chastity and fill me with chastity abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things deliver are possible deliver me from lust and fill me with your purity deliver me from lust and fill me with your purity and the gift of the holy spirit you need to overcome the spirit of lust is the fear of the lord fear of the lord is hatred of evil when you fear the lord you will hate sin you will hate impure things and it's a gift that will help you never to make the lord hurt but the fear of the lord is a gift that helps you never to offend god you fear the lord and you avoid evil ways psalm 119 verse 101 why david was being considered as a king after the heart of the lord because he hated 
every sinful way i hold back repeat with me together i, I hold, hold back my feet, feet from, from every, every evil way, way. In, in order, order to, to keep, keep your word. word i hold back my feet from every evil way he decided not to walk in an evil way again 128 verse 128 same chapter we read truly i direct my steps by all your precepts i hate every false way sisters and brothers we need deliverance from the spirit of lust many are tormented by this spirit and this is what the deliverance you really need this is what the lord helped mary magdalene to come out and the lord helped her and gave her this gift of the fear of the lord to overcome the spirit of lust you need the gift of the fear of the lord you need the virtues of chastity temperance and modesty and you need to have mary as your mother take mother mary as your mother this is the gift the lord gave as he was dying on the cross which is very very important to overcome this spirit of lust and we need to pray to abba father abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from lust and fill me with chastity now in order to overcome the spirit of laziness and laziness is fear of commitment i told you every sin every kind of this spirit is rooted in fear because devil puts inside you fear thereby you will be he become paralyzed you will fall a prey to that and in order to overcome the spirit of means the root of the spirit of laziness is the fear of commitment this is commitment to god fear of commitment to prayer fear of commitment to anyone even anything even to your job even to your husband even to your wife even to your duties even for spiritual things there are people how this laziness is so dangerous that there are people who say they say you know i sometimes i get angry i'm like this why why can't you tolerate me i tolerate you uh, this is my character i spend some time for gambling i watch some time tv i watch some time movies sisters and brothers this is called a spiritual laziness and it is a dangerous thing that if anybody is contented with the way you are and if you are getting angry you say it is my nature if you have any habit of even smoking taking alcohol you say no I, this is my habit you need deliverance you need deliverance and this is deliverance from laziness and especially fear of commitment and in order to overcome we need the gift of knowledge gift of the holy spirit this is gift of knowledge that seeing the things through the eyes of god understanding what the lord exactly wants from you from your life because god has prepared a plan for your life a plan for your welfare and you need to meditate john 1930 the word of jesus on the cross john chapter 19 verse 30 jesus said it is finished jesus never took rest he is always doing the will of the father he was always ful fulfilling father's will repeat with me when and jesus had received, received the wine he said, he said it, it is finished, finished. then he, he bowed his head and, and gave, gave up his spirit. spirit you need to meditate the way the word from the cross where jesus he is telling it is finished he has accomplished what father established what father has uh, appointed him to do he was never taking rest he was never lazy he himself said john 434 john 434 jesus himself said jesus said to them my food is, is to, to do, do the will of him, him who sent, sent me, me and to and complete, complete his work. work sisters and brothers we need to overcome this spirit of laziness and in order to overcome the spirit of laziness first we need the gift of knowledge and we need to meditate to the word of the cross that is jesus said it is finished then we need the virtues that is the virtue of love virtue of obedience and virtue of diligence which are the virtues love obedience and diligence, diligence. repeat love yeah. obedience yes. and diligence. diligence where there is love you don't feel lazy where there is obedience you don't feel lazy where there is diligence you are always active and alert pray after me this beautiful prayer abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence once again abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence then the spirit of 
jealousy spirit of jealousy the root of the spirit of jealousy is the fear of being powerless fear of giving up control fear of getting out of the driver seat fear of giving your control to others it's rooted in fear in order to overcome the spirit of jealousy we need the gift of the holy spirit this is the gift of wisdom sisters and brothers sometimes in the family you find some kind of commotion you don't you feel this house it is haunted there's some kind of misunderstanding the husband the wife they never uh, love each other understand each other some kind of problem and you will always find satan is attacking them some kind of problem but we have to read this is in the book of james chapter 3 from 16 we read james chapter 3 from 16 we read it's very important were together with me for were, were there, there is envy, envy and selfish, selfish ambition, ambition. there will also, also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. kind now if a husband is jealous of the wife there will be all kinds of problem and we will immediately say this house is haunted but this house is haunted with a spirit of jealousy not with anything else this is what we always forget and we don't treat the root we are going to the root causes of the satanic afflictions where there is envy and selfish ambition there will also be disorder you find disorder you go to a company you go to your office you go in maybe you are in the church in the parish and you find some kind of commotion there's nothing is working and people may say people have done this people have done that one but there is a, a there is another spirit hiding behind this spirit is called spirit of jealousy and in order to overcome this spirit of jealousy we need the gift of the holy spirit called gift of wisdom what is this wisdom to know what is pleasing to god to know what how does god looks into a person that means we are different we no human being is in competition with others no human being is called to compare but they are complementary no one is a threat to the other for we every human person is inevitable that's why there is no two human beings even though they are twins they are not the same their eye their uh, everything is different their eyes are different their thumb impressions are different that means we are different we are not a threat then you will get this when you receive the gift of wisdom from the holy spirit and you need the virtues to overcome the spirit of uh, jealousy the virtue of love where there is love there is no jealousy you need the gift of humility you need the gift of obedience where there is humility there is no jealousy no comparison no competition you need the gift of love pure love cuts out every kind of jealousy and we need to pray pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your wisdom deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your abba wisdom abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your love deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your love then the spirit of gluttony the root of the spirit of gluttony is the fear of mortification that you are afraid even to uh, you are afraid of the cross you are afraid of the suffering you are afraid of decreasing you are afraid of putting your false self away this is the root of the spirit of gluttony and in order to overcome the spirit of gluttony we need the gift of fortitude from the holy spirit fortitude is to persevere is to fight against the desires of our flesh of the things of this world the 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 things that satisfy our flesh and we need to overcome it and we need to meditate john 19:28 the word of jesus on the cross he said i thirst let's repeat after this when jesus, jesus knew, knew that, that all was all now finished, finished he said he in order to fulfill, fulfill the scripture, the scripture I, i am thirsty, thirsty. saint mother teresa of calcutta wrote in all her convents beside the cross i thirst and she has really said jesus was thirsting not for water not for wine not for food but for souls for our love for our conversion he is still thirsting do we just think that he is thirsting for material things he is thirsting for you for me 
he is thirsting for our love he is thirsting for our conversion he is thirsting for our salvation sisters and brothers and when we come to know then we will not take rest we will not feel glutton of the things to fill our material satisfaction we will always look for the things that will cleanse our soul that will be helpful for the salvation of not just our souls but the souls of others the same way jesus was living Pray after me. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from gluttony and fill me with self-control. Deliver me from gluttony and fill me with self-control. So what is gluttony? Absence of self-control. And we also need the virtues, virtues from the Lord, virtue of temperance and virtue of prudence. Virtue of temperance, virtue of prudence and virtue of self-control in order to overcome the spirit of gluttony. One self-control, that gift, that virtue is coming to you, you will be able to cast out the demon of gluttony from your heart. Why you need deliverance from it? There are people, I know one uh, girl, she was being, she has knee pain. And the root cause of her knee pain was they said that even she was treated, nothing was taking place. The, the root cause is overweight. Why overweight? Overeating. Why overeating? Gluttony. So the, the spirit is rooted in gluttony. So somebody who has knee pain, even if you treat knee pain, even if you swallow medicine after medicine, unless you overcome the spirit of gluttony, again, this person will have knee problem. That means maybe you, as you are attending this deliverance retreat, you may be completely in a different world thinking, how can I get out of this particular sickness where I tried all kinds of medicine and I'm not getting healed and somebody told you you need, you need deliverance and you're thinking of deliverance from this sickness. But you should know this sickness is rooted in a sin called a cardinal sin such as that of maybe gluttony, maybe greed, now we go to the sin of greed. What is this greed? Greed is rooted in the fear of detachment, fear of giving all, fear of letting go, fear of total dependence on God, God. fear to give yourself totally to God. That means you have the sin of greed, you have to depend, you rely on money, you rely on wealth, you rely on your possessions. That's why 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10 we read, what is the root causes of every evil? Love of money is the root of all evil. Repeat with me, 1 Timothy 6, 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But those who want, want to, to be rich fall, fall into temptation, temptation and, and are trapped by, by many senseless and harmful desires that, that plunge people into ruin, ruin and destruction. Verse 10. Because for, for the, the love, love of money, money is a root of all kinds of evil. evil. Why you may find that some kind of problem with the relatives. Fighting. And you find maybe you need a priest who has the power of exorcism because there is something that is going on. But what is the cause? Greed for money. Greed for money is the root of all kinds of evil, sisters and brothers. It's because of this greed that people can kill one another. This is so deadly. This sins are why this is called deadly. Cain killed Abel because of the spirit of jealousy. I, Esau lost his birthright because of the spirit of gluttony. Sisters and brothers, if you look into, we may just think externally, oh, this is the problem. Like when I get some fever, when I was in Tanzania, I got fever and I just went into our infirmary. I want to swallow a paracetamol. Then my brother priest said, no, father, wait. You go and check for your malaria because if you take paracetamol and when you check malaria will still hide then it will be more dangerous sisters and brothers when I went to check I got malaria then only I understood paracetamol cannot help in treating malaria we need medicine for malaria sisters and brothers this is what is when you find some kind of commotion disorder or some kind of fighting you have to know it, these are all rooted in these sins. Then how to overcome the spirit of greed we need? The gift of understanding from the Holy Spirit. Understanding is the gift where you re really understand what, who is God? What is his plan? 
Jeremiah 29 and 11 we read, For I know the plans I have for you, a plan for your welfare, not for your destruction. When you know that God has a plan, he is a provider. He will not make you a beggar. He will not make you poor. He is a provider. You don't want to work too hard just to make money to be rich. It's God who makes someone rich and he is caring for you. And he makes people rich. He gives you whatever you need before you were born. This earth was here. The, the tree, he has created not only trees, even the fruits on it. It's not you created it. God created it for you, for your welfare. If the Lord has provided for everything, he'll also provide for you. Give yourself to the Lord. Again, we need the word of Jesus that he prayed. This is Luke 23, 46. Jesus prayed, Father, I commend myself into your hands. Repeat with me. Then Jesus, crying with a loud Father voice, said, said Father, Father, into, into your hands, hands I command my spirit. Father, into your hands, I command my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Sisters and brothers, Jesus on the cross, he is praying, Father, I rely totally on you. Sisters and brothers, do you have... Can you rely totally on God? Do, are you free to give yourself totally into the Lord? Do you have that faith? And in order to overcome, we need these virtues of first faith. You need to have faith. One in God who provides, who protects, who is there for you. And you also need the virtue of generosity. That the more you give, the more you get. You will never lack anything if you are a giver. Jesus was a giver. Look at the cross. He gave himself totally. He gave everything, sisters and brothers. Let's pray. Pray after me. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from greed. Deliver me from greed. And fill me with your generosity. And fill me with your generosity. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from greed. Deliver me from greed. And fill me with your faith. And fill me with your faith. Sisters and brothers, there are many who are attending this deliverance retreat because you are childless. And you need a child. Then you feel maybe there is a block. There is a hidden trap. And you need deliverance. Maybe there are some in the family tree who are also childless. And now you feel you inherited that same problem. If you have a deliverance that you receive, you may get a child. Remember, the Lord wants you, even before you get a child, be generous. Help other children. Help children who are not born from your womb. And you will be blessed. Have you that faith? Do you have that faith to serve God? The Lord told Abraham and Abraham's faith is revealed in Romans 4 from 18. How generous was Abraham and how generous was God? How did God bless him? We repeat. It, this will go until 22. Hoping against hope, he believed he that, that he, would, he become would become the father, the father of, many of many nations according, according to what, what was said. said. So, so numerous shall your descendants, descendants be. be. He did, he did not, not weaken, weaken in faith when, when he, he considered, considered his own body, body which, which was, was already, already good as, as dead, dead, for he, he was of he was a hundred years old. old. For when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distress made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Sisters and brothers, be generous. And you'll be able to overcome the spirit of greed. Please pray after me. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from greed. Deliver me from greed. And fill me with your generosity. And fill me with your generosity. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from gluttony. Deliver me from gluttony. And fill me with your self-control. And fill me with your self-control. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from 
from lust deliver me from lust and fill me with your chastity and fill me with your chastity abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from laziness deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence and fill me with your diligence abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from anger deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness and fill me with your meekness abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from pride deliver me from pride and fill me with your humility and fill me with your humility abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are deliver possible deliver me from jealousy deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your love and fill me with your love let's kindly stand we are going to have a eucharistic adoration led by father joseph we are asking the lord to break every chain especially the chain of all these sinful spirits like that of anger pride lust laziness greed gluttony sisters and brothers there is power in the name of jesus let's together kindly stand wherever you are ask the lord beg the lord lord i need deliverance where else i go lord there is no one who can deliver me you have already nailed all these sins on the cross and i know you can set me free you can make me a new creation I claim the power in your name. I claim what you have done for me. I claim what you have established for me, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus.
my dear brothers and sisters we are going to worship right now in front of our blessed sacrament we are going to pray for deliverance right now wherever you are you are going to be delivered from all evil afflictions there are thousands of fasting and prayer from different parts of the world more than 120000 fasting days of the people thousands of people are participating in this live now thousands of people are interceding for you this is a battle battle against the evil one the victory belongs to our lord jesus he has defeated the evil one everybody close your eyes wherever you are just worship god in your heart he is anointing everyone right now the precious blood of jesus is being sprinkled upon you do not be standing idle sincerely join and participate in this adoration no one worry but don't worry about those who are standing next to you you and your lord jesus alone here right now his power is coming to you there is no place for evil spirit in the presence of god right now evil one is getting out of your body now Re- remember and believe now he is blessing you he is blessing every child every family every one who is crying in front of the lord no one will be disappointed no one will be left alone he is coming to you right now we pray for this people of god abba bless every family bless every child of god now close your eyes and pray your whole house is blessed now your whole room is blessed now let's invoke the presence of all the angels and saints now ask the intercession of all the saints all the angels now let us reject and renounce every kind of evil right now in jesus name every evil power be driven out right now in jesus name Jesus we command every evil affliction that is controlling our bodies we command to every evil affliction to get out of our bodies now in Jesus name Thank you Lord We are going to renounce and reject every evil affliction that we are into We are going to make the deliverance prayer After that we will start worshiping after making the deliverance prayer we will worship and praise and worship at the top of our voice wherever we are god is setting us free now the lord is healing many people everybody repeat after me or you can read it from the from the screen or you can also re- repeat it from uh, repeat it after me but before we pray this prayer promise to god god we reject and renounce every evil power evil power in our from our body from our family if there is anyone who is having unforgiveness hatred anger revenge promise to god that you will never repeat this you will never encourage this anymore tonight itself make sure to repent and re- reconcile with all those people pray for all those people if you have any enemy who cannot who do not want to reconcile with you pray for them bless them they will get deliverance if you are addicted to any bad habits wrong relationship attachment to evil things fleshly sin reject and renounce it right now the deliverance is only for those who have a, taken a decision those who do not want to give up the bad habits need not get deliverance if you do not have a desire how can god help you Sometimes me people may be wondering father I want to get deliverance I want to give up my bad habit but I may commit sin tomorrow I may repeat the same sin tomorrow So what shall I do My dear brothers and sisters don't worry You take a decision tonight that you want to give up You want to give up these bad habits or unwrong relationships 
whether you commit it commit this sin tomorrow or not that's a different matter right now you want to give it up right now you want to completely give it up that should be your attitude don't think and worry about your future future is in the hand of god god will protect you god will help you god will give you the grace to overcome with this decision let us repeat this word of god this prayer everybody close your eyes lift up your hands and pray if possible repeat after me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus by the power of the precious blood of jesus by the power of the precious blood of jesus by the power of the suffering by the power of the suffering death and resurrection of jesus death and resurrection of jesus by the power of the holy trinity by the power of the holy trinity dwelling within me dwelling within me by the power of the risen lord by the power of the risen lord seated at the right hand of the father seated at the right hand of the father in the holy name of the father in the holy name of the father son and the holy spirit son and the holy spirit using the authority using the authority given to me given to me by jesus by jesus and the power of his precious word and the power of his precious word precious blood precious blood i bind you i bind you the spirit of wickedness the spirit of wickedness and all other powers of evil and all other powers of evil that are in me that are in me i command you i command you to get out of me to get out of me and surrender to the lord jesus and surrender to the lord jesus and never more to return to me and never more to return to me may the lord jesus may the lord jesus crush you crush you satan satan and all your demons and all your demons under his feet under his feet and cast you and cast you into the bottomless pit into the bottomless pit 